Hello and welcome. Today we're going to discuss the uh, three things that you need to do before you open a salon. Yes, I am super uh, excited to share this information with you because I know we all want to open salons or we have open salons and you wasn't quite sure on what you should do in order to make that salon a success. So I want to share with you right now what you need to do, the three things that you need to do in order to make your salon a success. So before we jump into that though, really quickly, go ahead on and hit the share button and and share this out um, so that we can jump into content for today. So the three things. Now, I like to give you small nuggets, three things that you can easily implement, be able to, to track, to see progress from immediately and not just a whole bunch of, you know, general type information that eventually you're like, okay, what do I do with this information? So um, that is what we're going to discuss today. Just three quick tips and you can always go back, uh, visit my YouTube page and see um, all the other quick tips that I give you for building your beauty business. Before we jump into that though, of course, go ahead on and hit the share button, but let me explain a little bit about who I am. I'm Alicia Monique. I am your salon coach, product development consultant, partnering with you to help you establish your structure for your business so that you can build a team, build that clientele, increase your retail sales, and possibly develop that hair product line, all while becoming a scalable, profitable beauty business. And I like to start with your foundation because when we're so eager to get in and to actually, you know, build that clientele, we want to build a team. If that foundation isn't set, you're going to have problems when you bring someone aboard and the foundation isn't there. And then you wonder why, well, not wonder why now you're like, okay, I got to get rid of this person. I don't want this person there anymore. So let me figure out what I can do in order to get them out of my salon. So I want to share with you the, the tools that you need in order to make this happen correctly. Um, I work with the foundation so that you don't have to continue to revisit this part again. Once it's set, you implement it and you basically keep it moving. So uh, before we get into that, though, the Alicia Monique Immersive Experience is happening January 23rd, 27. Are you registered for that? Let me know, have you registered for that yet? Because it is an experience that you do not want to forget. Now, what do I mean by an experience? Typically we go to trade shows, we go to workshops, we go to seminars, we go to summits, we go to expos, we go to different type of events. Well, you haven't yet been to an experience, which is different than just showing up to an event and getting a notebook full of information, trying to decide what classes that you want to take or actually taking all of these classes and gathering all this information and not actually implementing the work that you want to, 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 to do. So at the experience though, you're actually going to do the work. Now, we have a financial consultant that's going to be there that's going to help you with getting your finances together, establishing yourself as an LLC, uh, a partnership. If you're thinking about a partnership, you have questions for that. Um, if you're not quite sure, should you remain a sole proprietor? Or if you're thinking about switching over to a corporation, we're going to solve all those problems and you're going to actually do it. So we're going to actually step into the process and get the process done. Not just talk about it and how to get it done, but do it. If you like, listen, this is where I need to be. We're actually going to get it done. Start that process so that when you leave, you're maintaining that process and not trying to begin it. We're also going to go over, um, your, your, your personal credit, your business credit, and talk about how to get those things rolling and things that you can do to fix it, to elevate it and all that great stuff. So that's not my forte, which is why I have a financial and a tax consultant that's going to be there discussing all of that with you now. So typically with a 
hair show, beauty show type thing that we're so used to going to. It's all about business and technical. There's no technical here. We are a mind, body, and business experience. So we have a yoga practitioner that's going to help you work on clarity in your mind. That's going to help you work on body, work on your body and the things that you can do to create that longevity if you love to stand behind the chair. And I get it. Some of us don't want to step away from behind the chair. So you need to have uh, tools that you can do in order to continue that longevity. But not just that. We have a life coach there because at some point in our life, we have to rewrite our mental plan. And for many, that's not easy. And I, I get it. So when it comes to rewriting a mental plan, what is it? How do you do that? You ever heard someone say, okay, you need to go ahead on and make a shift. You like, okay, yeah, girl. Yup. I really do. I, I do need to make a shift. Uh huh. I sure do. And then you're like, okay, well, how, how do I make a shift? You get up from this seat and you go sit in that seat and that's your shift. Well, that's not it. It's a little bit more to it than that. So we have a life coach there that's going to be helping you with that. And then you have myself that's going to be there helping you also when it comes down to structuring that salon. You're going to get all three of my books um, from attending the event, the experience, and you'll have uh, contracts um, from the experience that you're going to have your, um, we're going to discuss your booth rental if you're a booth rental salon, how to actually structure that out and do it, not just talk about it, but actually structure that out. When you walk away, you'll have your chair rental prices. You'll know why your chair rent, your price is this price and you'll have your contracts to actually put that in. We're going to talk about commission, how to commission your salon out, how to scale your salon as commission. And we're going to go over all the marketing tools that you need in order to better market your salon. So it's a lot to it. So it's not just the workshop seminar, summit or expo. It is an experience. Along with that is a three day retreat. Now who don't need a retreat right now? Who could not use three days of some form of relaxation? So we're going to have some work. We're going to have some mind, body and business, and we're going to have some relaxation also. So Go right now to the Alicia Monique experience.com and submit your applications ASAP, like ASAP. Um, so let's jump into content for today. So today we're talking about um, the three things that you need to do before you open a salon. So as a stylist, we want to transition from being a stylist behind a chair to you like, I want to open my own business. And I get that. I absolutely get it. And I love it. And I was you. And I did it. However, in doing that, it's not just a, um, um, like, let's just say it and just go ahead on and do it. It's some things that I want you to consider before you jump out and do it. Things that you don't get taught in beauty school. Things that they don't show you before you graduate. Things you find out when you're on this side of the industry that you like, oh my God, it's a lot more to it. So this is a never learn, a never ending process of learning and gain, gaining new knowledge, gaining new information. And when you want to step into having your own business, a lot of times what we think is I'm going to do, and I'm going to operate in the same manner that the salon I worked in did, but I'm not going to do this and I'm going to do this. So there's certain business ethics that we have to follow when it comes to opening our own salon. And when you working in a salon, some of those things you don't always see behind the scenes. They're, they're just not, you know, out front outright for you to say, okay, okay. I see that. That's how that's going to work. So let's jump into number one, right? Before you open your salon, number one, you need to consider your finances. A lot of times as stylists, we, we work hard, we save our money, 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 and we say, okay, I have enough money that I'm going to go and open a salon. And let's say, for example, you saved up, let's say $20,000, right? You save that up and... That's what you're going to use to actually start your new business. 
you have it in a, in a savings account it's your personal savings account first of all it's not your business savings account and then you want to withdraw that money out and you just start spending it or you start using your card you have to transfer from your savings to your checking and you just start using your debit card and paying for stuff or writing checks or using cash and things like that so i want you to consider your finances first now by considering your finances first of all everything should be under the business it should not be under your personal at all yes you can personally guarantee some things but when it comes to opening a salon your finances have to be un under this business because you're about to create this business venture and you want the business to be legit which is why many don't qualify for certain grants and loans that are out there to help us build a business because we're so caught up in just using our personal money from our personal savings in order to open a salon. So the first thing you have to consider is you have to consider your finances. What does your actual personal finance look like? What does, how does the money flowing in for your own personal business? It, are you establish yourself as a business? Are you taking your money that you're actually earning and putting it into a business account and paying yourself from that? So finances play a big part when it comes to opening an actual salon. And this is what you have to consider. If you have to go out, let's say you, you find this beautiful location and let's say uh, something breaks in this location and you have to pay for it and you like, man, that's out of my budget. So can you actually go to the, to the bank and, and get a loan that's going to pay for this over here for the business though? Not for you, because nothing, bur nothing broke in your house or your apartment or anything like that that you're either buying or renting. Something happened in the business over here that you like, oh, God, I got to cover that. He's going to reimburse me for it, but I need to cover that immediately so I can continue going on. This is why finances is so important when it comes to opening your actual business. So number one um, is to uh, look at your finances. What does that look like? Now, if you like, okay, my finances aren't together, then you need to reach out to me. Let's get your finances together. Let's get your credit together. Let's get your business credit together. Let's get your personal credit together. Let's get these finances uh, in control and organized so that you can now open the salon that you want to open. So going in, going out on a whim and you just gonna, you know, step out on faith and the money is going to come to you is not a good way to start this salon business that you want because you're starting it out um, struggling and it's going to continue. You're going to continue to struggle to try and keep afloat. So when you understand your finances first, you understand how you can maneuver in your business and the things that you have to do in order to make the business successful. So, Three things before you open a salon is number one, understand your finances. If you like, look, I need, I need financial help. I need, I need some type of financial assistance. Then you need to reach out to me to get that assistance immediately before you even consider opening a salon. So let's move on to number two, right? So three things before you open a salon. If you haven't already shared this out, please go ahead on and share it out. Um, I truly appreciate you hitting that share button really fast. You know, just push it out, share it out real fast. Thank you so much. So number two, when it comes to opening um, a salon, number two is uh, choosing the best location. So a lot of times I, I've been riding around, you know, different areas and different places and things like that. And sometimes I will see a salon, but I'm not sure I saw a salon. And then if I circle back around, I did see a salon where it's like in the back, in the corner somewhere around the bush or in the, in the crevice, you know? And if I really didn't see it, or I thought I saw it because I may have saw the, the, the signage on the street. And now I'm curious as to where this is at because I've never seen it before. That's not a great location. Because you want to be somewhere where your salon can actually pull traffic from other businesses around the area. Now, you probably like, I'm in a small town. I'm in a small area. Uh, my salon is in a house and it's the only salon that sits on the block. It's a very busy street. 
I get that. I get that. But the, the key part that you just said is that uh, you're on a busy street. You're facing the street. It's in a house. You have your own signage and everyone can see you as they pass by. They can see the sign and they can see the location. That's great. I understand being in small towns, but you still have to choose the location great. So let's say if you was in this small town and you wasn't on a busy street, you was on this really slow street where maybe trucks only come down and it's on a side street somewhere, that wouldn't be a great location to put your salon. If you're in a small town, I would like move around the corner, get on a busy block. If you want to be the house on the busy block as a salon, uh, if you're going to be the house uh, with the salon, then you got to be on the busy block where traffic is just going up and down all day long so that you can be visible. So the number two in, in before opening a salon is to choose a best location. Uh, a great location too is if you're in a plaza, see what other stores are around you. How many other busy stores are around you that's going to, you can pull traffic from and be able to, to market to and to be able to grow your salon with little effort. So I'm not saying that you don't have to do any marketing, but what least amount of marketing can you do if you're in this busy plaza you like? It's people always coming and going. It's always traffic. It's always something. Like that's the ideal location that you want to be in. But as I said earlier, I understand that your area may not have those busy locations. You may be in a different area, but you want to be visible. That's the biggest thing. Best location is being visible, being where the traffic is. Um, okay, so quick second, go ahead on and hit the share button and share this out really quickly. I want to thank you for taking the time to, to, to learn and to educate yourself on the three things that you need before you open a salon. So really fast, if you haven't shared this out, go ahead on and share this out one more time. I truly appreciate you for, for, for doing that. And let's jump into number three, right? Okay, so number three is the best structure, right? So what is the best structure for your business. So you have your finances together, you're in a great location, and now it's time to establish some type of structure. And by structure is how are you going to operate? Are you gonna operate as a booth rental, as a commission, or both? Or how are you gonna do that? These are things that have to be decided in the beginning. Um, we don't do enough research and we jump out and we say, oh, I'm going to do it like this because it's easy, it's simple, and I can pick a number. Um, actually, I'm just going to pick the number that I was just paying booth rental for in the salon that I left, and boom, there it is. I want you to dig a little bit deeper on this structure and know why you're choosing this and know how much your chair is supposed to cost based on a certain criteria and things like that. So that structure that you need, um, what type of uh, professionals do you want inside of your business? Um, people, who do you want to work there? All it is, do, do you need an, a manager? Are you gonna have an assistant? Are you gonna have a receptionist? Like all of that needs to be decided. How are you, how are you gonna run your back bar? Are you gonna supply a product for, uh, for stylists? Or are you gonna supply like basic necess necessities like um, towels, capes? Um, neck strips, you know, um, are you going to have uh, stations where you supply the actual equipment? Like if you're a nail salon, you actually have the actual uh, equipment already there. They use the equipment, things like that. Um, are you just going to supply the nails and the actual, um, the polymer or the monomer? Uh, not a nail person at all. Y'all know the stuff, the acrylic powders and things like that. Um, what are you going to actually supply? This is all a part of getting the structure together so that, when all of this is set and you know how you operate, when you bring in somebody, you tell people how your salon is gonna lay out, how things are gonna be established, how stuff is going to work, how you run, how you operate. A lot of times we don't establish our structure completely. We pick a piece of it and we run with that. And all the pieces are never together. 
Like it's never together. It's always, oh, I got to go and do this. Oh, I got to go and do this. Well, when you establish a structure in the beginning, if you know how your back end runs, if you know how your back bar runs, if you know where you order your, your, your gallons of shampoos and conditioners from and when do you order and what do you order and how much do you order, you know what you supply for your other stylists, you know what tools you provide for your other stylists. Like all of that stuff have to be set before you start bringing people in. So number three was establish the best structure for your business. Like that's so important. It's like going to, you ever had a job where you go to work and you like, this is the messiest job ever. Like they are so unorganized. It's not professional and they don't do this and they don't do that. You don't want to be that salon. So this is why it's important for you to establish the best structure in the beginning before you start bringing people in because when you start bringing people in, they're going to see what you already have set and whatever, whatever you already have set. If it doesn't look great, they're going to be like, mm, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know about this. Like this is a messy salon. Like y'all doing some crazy stuff. Like, oh uh, yeah, I'm out of here. And then now you wonder why stylists don't stay there. Stylists are always leaving or stylists get on your nerves or you don't like working with people. Well, you haven't established that best structure for your business yet before you start bringing people in. So people don't really, you still trying to get it together and they see you trying to get it together and it's a mess. Like it just doesn't make sense. No one wants to work somewhere that's a mess for anybody. It doesn't matter what it is. I, I don't care if you, you want to work at the Dollar Tree. If you work there and it's a mess, you like, listen, I'm about to quit because it's a mess. Your salon business is the same way. So we're talking the three things that you need to do before you open a salon. Um, quick recap. Number one is to understand your finances. Make sure that your finances are in order. Don't just pull in from your savings out of your personal account. Get your finances in order. Number two was to choose the best location. So make sure that you choose the best location uh, when it comes to open in that salon that you want to have. Make sure it's seen, it's visible, and it's in a highly trafficked area. And number three was to choose the best structure. So what's the best structure for your business? It's that the whole structure, not just a piece of it, not just a part of it, not just a little bit of it, not just I'm going to work on this right here and I'm going to hire her and I'm going to work on that over there. No, let's establish the whole thing so that people see how you operate and how your business functions. Now you can say, okay, I have all of that done. Let me work on another aspect of it. So these are the three things that I have for you when it comes to opening a salon. These are the best practices that you need to incorporate before you bring someone aboard, when you're actually out there looking, when you're actually out there getting that ball rolling. Um, and after that, it's all about reaching out to a coach. Reach out to myself. I, I've done this plenty of times with salon owners. I've done this with my own salon. So I know how this operates. I know how to set all this up so that you just basically maintain it and you keep having, um, you just keep looking back and, and tweaking it and adjusting it, but not starting all over from the beginning again. Uh, lastly, you got to get your application in right now for the immersive experience. I'm telling you, you do not want to miss this experience, right? It's January 23rd to 27th in Cape Coral, Florida. Um, the application process takes a minimum of three minutes. It's multiple choice. Be sure to hit the submit button at the end um, to get your applications in. We're gonna start selecting salons uh, here soon. It's only for 10 salon owners, aspiring salon owners and stylists. If you're a nail tech barber, it's the same thing for you as well. We're covering your mind, body, and business at this experience. So take note, get that ball rolling or open your new salon. Come to this experience so that you can get all the tools that you need in order to move forward and to grow uh, successfully inside of your business. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can uh, find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. You can message me. You can DM me. You can send me an email through my website at aliciamonique.com. 
More important, submit your application today to the Alicia Monique Immersive Experience by going to the Alicia Monique Experience.com. Now, I'm going to head on out. As always, I am your salon coach, helping you establish the foundation and structure for your business so that you can create a profitable and scalable beauty business. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon.